Hello, and welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're jumping with SPAD.next in version 0.9.15 and the changes to the multi-panel. So the SciTech Logitech multi-panel has now been updated to the standard button and LED system. So let's jump into it and see how we have to make changes. So when you come into SPAD.next and you head over to your panels, you should find your multi-panel. If you do not see your multi-panel here, it may be that in settings under devices, uh, you need to enable the SciTech Logitech multi-panel. After you enable it, close it, restart, and it will show up here in the panels page. Since you did the update and recently, you may have come in and as you load up your profiles, you're starting to see that there are these yellow warnings. Currently, this is an obsolete event. Please replace this as it will be unsupported in future updates. What does that mean? Well, it means these are the old short modes and it was the way in which the panel behaved that you'd press a button and it put the hardware into short mode or long mode if you had a long press. This methodology is long gone and slowly over time it has been adapted. So when you go to the add event, you'll no longer see those old short mode activated uh, nor system or scripted events involving the short and long mode activated. This also means that the LEDs have been upgraded and in most of those cases, the LED event mode has already dynamically been updated. It's just here you have to manually make changes to this short mode and long mode. Also, you're going to find when you come to your virtual power setting, that these also have unsupported unknown events. So these might be the old legacy uh, and you're going to want to change those. So let's get started with making changes. It's really quite simple. In most cases, the only thing you're gonna see is something to do with the buttons here for the short mode, long modes. Uh, you're not really gonna have any issues over with your uh, auto throttle switch or your flaps or your pitch trim. Those things should be standard. Uh, the knobs and the displays should have stayed the same. That shouldn't be affected by you. So first thing we want to do is we also want to change this behavior while we also fix things. So here we're going to come over and we're going to change trigger to... So we could do a scripted event and this will set the virtual power on uh, because a change to the virtual power on event means when virtual power is turned on and this you do this so we're going to change this to a scripted event we're going to change this one to a scripted event and now what we want to do is double click on it to open it up and you can see that when the avionics master switch is set to one it will enable virtual power on the panel now this is kind of cool uh, however, technically it's a little bit wrong. So if we look in the sim and we turn off the avionics switches, this is going to turn the uh, multi-panel power off as you see here. But if the avionics switches are on and you were to turn off the master battery and power, technically this circuit is gone now and this shouldn't be on but this is following the switch so this is still following the switch behavior not the actual circuit so let's go ahead and turn those back on so instead what we would want to do is change this now that with microsoft flight sim we have access to more things so you're going to find that there is an avionics, if I could spell avionics, there is a circuit, avionics circuit on. Now this is going to work a little bit better for us because it's going to actually track whether or not the avionics circuit has power and that's what we want to hook this up to. So now this guy is going to turn on and off with the avionics circuit. And now when we take a quick look in the sim and we turn off the battery, you'll see that in this state, the avionics power would have been removed even though the bus switches were on. And now we see our multi-panel turning back on and off. So that's excellent. So there you go. We fixed the first part, which is the virtual power settings. Now we're going to move on to fixing a button. And this part's real easy. 
uh, because these all have toggle events, we don't need to force the data. Instead, what we'll do is we'll change the trigger type to a press short. So now we can change the button mode to a button press for a short time. The other thing we can do is get rid of setting data. We don't need to set data. We'll let the SIM set the data. We're just going to press the toggle of the button just like we would in the SIM. Uh, so we'll just make this a little bit bigger so you can see we're going to add action, send simulation event, and now we're gonna look for the uh, AP master. And this is a toggle event, so we only need to toggle it which means we can now get rid of the additional event. So we only need the one event and it's a toggle. So again, if we look at the SIM as well, bring ourselves back in with the SIM. If inside of the SIM, I press the autopilot toggle, it went green, uh, it's enabled, and you saw our LED over here uh, did light up. And now if we press the button, you'll see that the autopilot toggles off. We press it again and it toggles back on. So we have that ability to set the autopilot on and off just like we can pressing it inside of the SIM as well. So there you go, that's taken care of. But what's also nice about the new LED system being implemented is we no longer need to assign two events for this based on the data value changing and turning the LED off. Well, we can get rid of that and only use one of them because we don't have to have a condition because we can tie the LED directly to that same data var. And this is more efficient, according to Conix, in that this will be the most efficient use in processing. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna delete that condition. Of course, it says, hey, you have to have a condition. Well, you don't. So you'll see that when you're changing the LED light, you can pick the device, the target, which button it is. So you could, if you wanted, actually target other devices, but we're gonna keep everything tied to its own button so it's all clean. Now, if you had the condition, you could also auto off. So if you kept the condition, when it equals one, turn it on, you could check this box. And when that condition fails, it will turn off. But that's slightly less efficient than in our case, since we only need the one data var, that auto turn off might make sense if you needed three conditions, this and X and Y. If I needed a bunch of things to validate the condition for on, uh, but if any of those failed, then yes, that's a place where it's still very efficient to use the auto off instead of setting up multiple events. So here, because we want an on off state and based tied directly to the one variable, we're going to tie it to the data value. So we're gonna come in here and now we're gonna look for the autopilot master data boolean. So now that's all we have to do. It's tied. You'll see that there is no issue with this. You hit OK. And now that LED is completely tied to the autopilot master. And if we press the button, the autopilot turns off and the LED goes out. We press the button again. The autopilot goes on. Press it again, autopilot gets off. You get the idea. Now we don't have to manage more than one LED event and one button press event. So we're gonna have to fix this for all of our buttons because we wanna clear this out. So the easiest thing to do would be to come here, highlight both of these or click copy all events. Or if I just click on one of these and press control shift C, it also copies all. We come to the heading and we press Control V. Do I wanna replace all of these? Yes, I do. And so now we're going to change our autopilot master. Uh, and sometimes it's good to check panel. So panel heading hold, uh, what this'll do is press the panel button. And that usually means that it won't lock to your current heading. Instead, it locks 
to, it just enables heading mode. And then that way, if you had already dialed a heading in a different direction, as opposed to syncing it. So I prefer to use that one. And then usually what I do, and this is where the extra events come in handy, but first let's go ahead and change that data value to autopilot heading lock. So now we're looking for the heading lock. Uh, heading comes first, so heading lock. And now we've changed that. Here in the sim, if we press the heading button, it puts it into heading mode and you can see the bug stayed off to the side where it was so it didn't force the bug up. However, what we can do, which is really nice, is we can now leverage those extra modes. So if we come in and we say add event, now we want a press long event, add action, send simulation event, we can go ahead and look for the heading sync. And because we are using the 1000, I'm gonna go ahead with AS1000 PFD uh, heading sync. And so now what this does for us, and I'm gonna highlight this and I'm gonna hold control and press the arrow so that I can move the order of how I want to see them. Or if I wanted the LED at the top, I can move the LED to the top, right? So you just highlight, control, up, away you go. So our heading bug is currently uh, pointed to uh, 360, but if we hold down the heading key for a long press, it now syncs the heading bug. And so that way you can toggle heading mode on and off. Uh, and if your heading bug is here and then you are toggling and enabling heading mode, it doesn't move the bug on you. So you don't have to worry about which operation to do. And anytime you want to bug up, hold down the key and it would auto center. So now that we've got our heading bug, now we got to move on to do nav. So it works the exact same way. Grab one of these, copy it, control shift C, uh, or again, little drop down arrow, copy all events. And then what you want to do is come over to nav. In this case, we're going to click on the drop down and we are going to paste and we're going to replace all events. We click yes. So now for the LED, we want to tie this to the nav lock key. So there's the nav one lock. It is a Boolean and that will now drive when it's nav lock. And now for the button press event, same thing. We're going to go, we're going to look for a panel and a nav lock. You'll see that there is no panel nav lock. So in that case, we're going to come back up and we're going to go with the nav one hold. That's the event. And now we've got that done. So from here, you're basically just going to have to rinse and repeat. You're going to click on a button, copy all events, and then you're going to go ahead and one by one go through and fix your autopilot. Also, don't forget, you can always check the online snippet section because there's a chance somebody has already fixed this for you. There you have it. It's not too scary and it should be easy to do. If you made it this far, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't and come along on the next one. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.